Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to talk about the fact that someone in the entertainment industry has finally come out and just said what I've been saying was going to happen for years. Mark Wade, the creator of such iconic graphic novels, or I should say the co-creator of such iconic graphic novels as Kingdom Come, has said that he would rather see the entire industry burn down before he will share it with anyone who is politically opposed to what he believes. And I'm going to cover not just that he made this statement, or why he himself would make this statement, but why people like him throughout the entertainment industry have this exact mindset. And it revolves around the idea that they would rather see entire industries destroyed before returning to traditional ideas of storytelling and traditional ideas of a hero. But if you would like Stories based upon the traditional idea of a hero. There are three links in the description and on the pinned comment for my three graphic novels. Thomas Valiant, The Valiant Heroes, and Crom the Destroyer. There are two superhero graphic novels and one sword and sorcery returned to form for low fantasy. I deal with the expression of a traditional hero and traditional storytelling, trying to give you, to the best of my ability, action, entertainment, and fun and all of that is wrapped up in some spectacular art, which you're looking at in the background. So if any of that looks or sounds appealing to you at all, click on one of those links in the description or the pinned comment and go on over and order yourself a copy of one of my graphic novels today. Okay, so back to my topic. I will give you the exact quote from Mark Wade and flash it up in the background. He is responding to someone on Facebook and says, I think a lot of us would rather see the industry burn down than, quote, get together with the alt-right. I know I would. Sorry. So, number one, note here that he's saying a lot of us. So he's speaking on behalf of a much larger group, or what he sees as a much larger group. And he's not just talking about one character. He's not just talking about one form of comics. He's not just talking about one company of comics. He's talking about an entire industry. And that, again, he would rather see the entire industry burn down than get together with the alt-right. And if you go down to the replies, the lengthy replies that he gets on this post itself, you will see that his definition and the definition of so many people within the entertainment industry of alt-right is anyone who disagrees with them politically. And yes, that would include traditional liberals. Just quickly, by the way, there's a slogan on the far left, which is liberals get the bullet too. But again, the point is that he would rather see the entire industry burn rather than share the industry with anyone who does not share his political beliefs. And one of the earmarks of his responses to all of this is the fact that, yes, he believes that people who want traditional forms of storytelling and traditional forms of hero are part of what he calls the alt-right. Anyone who wants to go back to, let's say, the storytelling within the 1980s or the 1990s, you're considered part of this umbrella group of alt-right. By the way, this is a mindset that is shared by Bob Iger himself, the head of Disney, as I covered in an interview with him a couple of weeks ago. And if you want the quotes from that, the exact quotes from Bob Iger, go back to my video about Bob Iger about three, four weeks ago. He himself said that when he came into Disney, he needed to distinguish between the people who respected the history of the company and reverenced the history of the company. And he had to get rid of the people who reverenced it. Why? Because that would block what he calls innovation, or to put it in layman's terms, the ability of the stories to move forward. This, I say, is the mindset of Mark Wade himself, having watched interviews with Mark Wade. Yes, he has read a spectacular number of comics. Yes, he does have respect for those comics. Yes, he says that how to create a good story, according to Mark Wade, is to use that entire history. But he's of the same mindset of Bob Iger. You can't reverence that history. There's a difference between what they call respect and reverence. And reverence would include continuing to use those kinds of stories. 
continuing to try to bring them back. Very briefly, and I don't want to get too far into this, but I have in other videos, the basic mindset of these quote unquote progressive individuals who make up the majority of people who run the entertainment industry, no matter what it is, the mainstream entertainment industry today, is an idea derived from the political ideology of critical theory expressed in works like The Dialectic of Enlightenment, which basically examines story itself and says there's a Hegelian dialectic within storytelling and within history itself, a production of new ideas from two or three older ideas. And once those new ideas take shape and are accepted, those old ideas are placed behind a barrier of the unrepeatable. You can no longer go back and use those old ideas because they are now out of date. We have, quote unquote, progressed beyond a point where they are useful. And therefore, although you respect them to the extent that you will say, yes, this is where we came from, you can't go back and use them again. And this is the mindset of Bob Iger. This is the mindset of Mark Wade. This is the mindset of so many people within the entertainment industry that, no, you can't go back to those old kinds of stories, those old kinds of heroes, because we have progressed beyond a point where they can be used. We must continually move forward, never go back to what has worked in the past. To the extent, again, like Mark Wade is saying, we would rather see the entire industry burned down before returning to those kinds of stories. So what does this say, first of all, about Mark Wade and people like him, and then about story itself? Well, it says that, yes, Mark Wade does love comics. He does love the comic industry. This is evident within any interviews that you watch with Mark Wade. But here's the thing. He loves something else more. He loves his politics more than he loves the entire industry that keeps him fed. Not only that keeps him fed, but keeps a multitude of people fed, and he would rather see that entire thing burn down rather than share the industry with people, again, that he disagrees with politically. That is to say, he loves his politics more than he loves the entire industry. And you'll note something here. Again, as I said, this is an industry that employs multitudes of people, and he himself, and he says people like him, would rather burn the entire industry down then share it with people who they oppose politically. So again, it's important to note that yes, he would destroy something that provides for so many people because he personally doesn't want to do something. So in its essence, he is being quite literally selfish. He would say, before I give up something that I want and I see as good, I will burn down something that provides for many. I guess it's the reverse of what Mr. Spock expressed within the Wrath of Khan. In his mind, the good of the one, being him, outweighs the good of the many. And to answer deeply the question of why, and why this is derived, or at the very least you can see it, derived from ideas of storytelling, I'm going to go back to very ancient ideas. The origins, partly, of Western civilization itself, and certainly the origins of our kinds of storytelling. That is to say, the kind of storytelling that has developed within Western civilization. I typically go back to the works of Plato and Aristotle. Why? Because they are considered the masters of Athenian thought, which are considered the masters of the thinking within Greece itself, which, by the way, academia sees Western civilization as having two parents, one of them being Athens, the other one being Jerusalem. So these people are intensely important within Western civilization, so much so that Aristotle's creation of the categories, which basically built science, I think would give him the bragging rights of every time you flip a switch or ask for medical treatment or drive down a road, you can't do so without, in some small way, thanking Aristotle. And in the background, his teacher Plato. Oh, and besides all of that, of course, creating the building blocks of what we now call logic, which is taking the rules of reason and applying them to reason itself, which again leads us to all of modern science. But he didn't confine himself to exploring only the 
philosophical as it leads into the natural scientific, he also took his keen mind and applied it to story. And when he talks about story, he says, in general, when you're writing a story, you need to have a hero. You need to have a protagonist at the very least, and your protagonist needs to be someone who stands out because they are more virtuous than the normal everyday person. So we're using broad strokes here, by the way, not relevant in every case. I'm sure plenty of people who have in the past and will in this video disagree with me on this point. I'm using broad strokes. But he says that when you have a hero, it is someone, first of all, that you can connect to, but second of all, see as in some way superior to the everyday man, because you yourself are usually the everyday man. And what's the problem with doing that? Well, if you just use the everyday man, it's going to be boring and unexciting. And why would you want to watch a story based on that? But at the same time, he says that when you write this story, if you have a story which allows the villain to come out on top, most people will see that as offensive. And yes, offensive morally, but why offensive morally? Because it does not follow the dictates of reality itself. A villain is a villain because they're vicious. That is to say, they are full of vice. What is vice? Vice is a denial of what is real. A story is supposed to be a representation of reality. And if you have something within this representation of reality, which is fundamentally unreal, that is to say, a vicious person actually coming out on top, then your audience is going to recognize that as being a bad story, because it breaks the fundamental rules of reality itself. So they look at it and say, that's not real. That's not what would happen. And it might just be expressed in, that is offensive to me. And the opposite of all of that is the hero. The heroic life is a life of virtue. That is to say, you have these virtues. They are prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. In order to have any of those, you need to go down that line. First, you need to have prudence. That will lead you to justice. That will lead you to fortitude that will lead you to temperance. But in order to have prudence, which is correct decision making, first you need to employ a step which is outside of virtue itself. It's the idea of right reason. Right reason is your reason in accord with what is real. So you need to acknowledge, first of all, what is real and have your mind acknowledge what is real and then act according to what is real in order to have prudence, in order to have any of the other virtues, in order to be a hero. So at its core, what Aristotle was doing was taking story and applying the ideas of logic to it. The ideas of logic being derived from reality itself. The first rule of logic is a thing is what it is. You must acknowledge what is real. And the heroic is the path of the virtuous, and that is the path of continually acknowledging and working with what is real. The path of the villain, the path of the vicious, that is to say the path of vice, is the path of someone who denies reality at every turn. And since a story is a representation of reality, your hero is going to come out on top, your villain is going to be defeated. If it happens the other way around, it's a bad description of reality, and people simply will not like your story. And why am I going over all of that? Well, first of all, is to show that people like Mark Wade and many others who would rather see the industry burn down before sharing it with someone of a different political stripe cannot write traditional heroes. They can write, they can tell stories that are complex, but no, they can't tell a traditional hero story because they don't understand the idea of a hero. Why? Because they're selfish. And the idea of that selfishness is expressed more within the statements of Aristotle's teacher, Plato. And I'll give you now just a few short quotes from Plato himself. Now, as I have said many times on my channel, I believe that the seminal work of Plato, the greatest expression of his thought, is Plato's Laws. The seminal chapter of Plato's Laws is chapter 5, and the seminal statement that he makes in chapter 5 goes as follows. There is an evil, great above all others, which most men have implanted in their souls, and which each one of them excuses within himself and makes no effort to avoid. It is the evil indicated in the saying that every man is by nature a lover of himself, and that it is right for him to be so. But the truth is that the cause of all sins, in every case, 
lies in the person's excessive love of himself. For the lover is blind in his view of the object loved, so that he is a bad judge of things just and good and noble, in that he deems himself bound always to value what is his own above what is true. So this is the supporting idea of what I would say Aristotle is expressing within his analysis of storytelling. He's channeling the ideas of his teacher and saying, if you deny the truth in a story, which is a representation of what is real and reality is expressed by what is, what is true, then again, you have a bad story and you have a bad story based upon these ideas of the hero and the villain. And your villain is someone who what? A villain is someone who values himself and what is his above what is true. By the way, this whole thing is expressed in an entirely different way within the other parent of Western civilization, which is Jerusalem. It is expressed in the ideas of pride being the mother of all sin. Because pride at its heart is the idea that I know better than what is real. I know better than the truth. But if we get back to Plato and his statements, there's one he makes several lines after the quote I just gave, which describes Mark Wade and the people like him in the entertainment industry. And that's where Plato goes on to describe the men who support what is true and the men who choose themselves selfishly over what is true. He says, if any man is jealous and does not wish to share any good thing with anyone in a friendly spirit, then the man himself must be blamed. But his possession is not to be esteemed any the more because of its possessor. Rather, one needs strive to gain it with all one's might. So what he is describing and what he is talking about is not just excellence, but true excellence, i.e. excellence in accord with reality. The good man, the virtuous man, the man who is honorable, seeks the excellence of things, the true excellence of things. And so if he sees something which is good in the hands of a man who is not good, you don't disteem, you don't rebuke, you don't try to destroy the thing itself that is good. You simply try to take it out of the hands of the man who is not good so that you can give proper place, give proper honor to the good thing by allowing it to excel in true excellence. And oh, by the way, he does connect this himself to the political saying, the man who does this enlarges the state. That is to say, he makes the society around you better by enhancing the true excellence of a good thing. This is the exact description of a jealous man in the ideas of Plato. And this jealous man is a description of Mark Wade and those like him. The jealous man is the selfish man. The jealous man is the man who values what is his own rather than what is true. And he would rather hoard this thing, which is a good, which could help all of society for himself rather than share it with anyone else. And I don't think I could come up with a more perfect summation of this entire attitude than the quote from Mark Wade. We would rather see the entire industry burn down before we share this with people we disagree with politically. Mark Wade and those like him are selfish, petty men. They are jealous men. Although they do respect things like the entertainment that they deal with, they don't respect it enough to allow it to be free, to allow it to actually be in the hands of anyone except for themselves. They hoard it for themselves. Why? Because they know that if they open this thing up to the competition of ideas, the marketplace of ideas, they will see that the traditional ways of storytelling are not outdated. They haven't been placed behind a barrier of the unrepeatable. Quite the opposite. They are supported by reality, by what is true, and by allowing these good things, and yes, I would call storytelling a good thing for our society, for our species itself. If you allow story to be shared and therefore to be handled with an idea of true excellence, it will destroy the falsehood of the political ideology in which they have immersed themselves and which tells them that they themselves should be a lover of themselves above all else, including above the truth.
So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this. And don't forget, there are two links in the description and the pinned comment for my three graphic novels. They focus on the traditional idea of a hero that I have described here, the traditional idea of telling a story, which I have described here, and, as I said, is wrapped in spectacular art. So if any of that sounds or looks appealing to you at all, click on one of those links in the description or the pinned comment and go on over and order yourself a copy of one of my graphic novels today. And since I am recording this the day before Christmas Eve, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.